everybody. Happy New Year. 2023 is here. The football filling is back. Arsenal, you are taking the mick now. Honestly, you're running away, away with it. Man City dropping points. What are you doing? I thought that was an absolute banker. Fair play, Everton, though. And Manchester United, naughty, naughty. You're teasing me. I think you're going to get top four, you know. Come on, let's have it. Okay, Tubesy boy, Tubesy, wake up. What are you doing? Sorry, I just smashed the dozed off. I woke up and went back to sleep. He's doing a Rashford, everybody. <laughs> He's doing a Marcus Rashford. <laughs> Go on, Marcus. <laughs> which, I love you, Marcus. Which brings us on nicely to Manchester United, Tubesy boy. First of all, Happy New Year, lads. Thank you okay, you. yeah? Happy New Year, Thank mate. You. Nice to see you, mate. Year. Nice to see you. Happy New Year. Everyone, Happy New Year. Um, right, want to talk about Manchester United, right? Another win for them. They are sneaking up that league table. I think they're third now, are they? Um... They are picking up points right, left and centre. Big win for them against your boys, Wolves. Unlucky. Um, I want to talk first and foremost though, about Marcus Rashford, right? What do you make of this whole scenario? Um, I respect the manager. It, the rules are rules. Yeah. He didn't mean to be late. He obviously fell, you know, fell asleep and then woke up for back to sleep. And I think it was dealt with well. Yeah. He's come on. He's absolutely lit it up, hasn't he? And he just went afterwards and just said, this is what happened. I broke the rules. I got drops for half a game. I thought it was a good thing. Should he not... Just fine him because surely you, the team's at a disadvantage then because it, it, it was a misdemeanour, wasn't it? Depends what the rules are. Like if, you've, if you're late for a meeting and you don't play, that might be one of the main eyes rules. Isn't that going to be that sooner or later it's going to obviously don't be late? Be but, to the detriment of the team. Yeah, like they needed him to come on and it was like half time couldn't consume enough, soon enough and they chucked him on at half time. I'm with Tuesday boy. I'm yeah? with Tuesday boy. I agree with this 100%. It's obviously a massive thing of Ten Hag where he's gone, yeah. right, do you know what? These are the rules, lads. Yeah, stick with the rules. You're cool. The rules aren't drastic or anything. The rules aren't like anything be over on the time. Top. Yeah, yeah, basically. <laughs> like, I guarantee you, his rules are basically be on time with everything you need and you'll get on fine. Honestly, you'll get absolutely yeah. fine. And he didn't. He fell asleep. He missed a team meeting. By the way, can I say, missing a team meeting is just like, whoa. That has got to be one of the worst things you can possibly do, seriously. Other than not actually turning up to the match, yeah? Missing the team meeting is huge. It's a massive problem. I guarantee you all the lads would have been sitting there, like all the Man United players would have been sitting there in the meeting room <laughs> going, Ooh, where is he? Somebody ring him, somebody ring him. Like, they'd have been doing all would that Would they kind have been loving stuff. it? Oh, they would have been... And then you would no, hear, hear the door go... Yeah, that's what I mean. It, it depends how late he was. Dep yeah. If he missed the whole meeting, oh, my God. Like, but that change... That's like, for, for Ten Hag, that's a nightmare because, obviously, Rashford's going to be starting, yeah? Yeah. And then, all of a sudden, he has to go and do a team meeting and change the team there and then. It's oh, bonkers. Yeah, I didn't think it's about It's absolutely that, yeah. bonkers. So, he's, he started the game with Marshall at top... He, he's got to change everything. It's all... Oh, it's absolutely crazy. Was the team meeting on the day of the game? Yeah. It, the day before? I think it's the morning of the game. I think it was oh, the morning of the he game. He took it in good um, spirit, like, after the game. The whole thing was dealt with perfectly. Yeah, yeah, it was, to be fair. Marcus came out and he spoke completely honest. Yeah. I was late for a meeting. Brilliant, wasn't I, it? I thought it was... It oh, worked I, out. I, I, I respect it. I'm with you, mate. Full, full respect, Eric Ten Hag. Honestly, you've absolutely smashed this one. You've got the rules. Everybody stick to the rules. It's not hard. Fuzzy, just quickly before while we're on the kind of Man United thread, Ronaldo signed for his new club. Yep. Have you heard the story about the number seven shirt? Allegedly. Come on, give it to so, me. So apparently, Ronnie's gone there. I wear the number seven shirt. Obviously. The current number seven's gone. No, 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 no. I'm number seven. <laughs> so <laughs> what I'm hearing is the club just sacked him. What is he doing? <laughs> I don't know how true that is. Do you reckon he's he's trying to genuinely throw his weight around and go, nah, 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 this Ronaldo bloke, no chance, mate. I'm the number seven here, all right? I'm the guy that wears this number. No chance. You're not having it. You have to have number eight or nine or something. <laughs> Just sacked him. <laughs> oh, I'll give my shirt back now. You're out. <laughs> it's only going to well, well, go one way, isn't oh, it? Oh, mate, the whole thing's a shambles. Like, You're not happy with Ronnie, are you? It's just, what's the point? Oh, I know what the point no. is. Shitload of money. I know, but, but he's already a billionaire. Like, do you need just, to go and do that? I've always said, like, when everyone asks me, like, or we're talking about it, I've always said Ronaldo over Messi. But now, you just look what Messi's done. He's just won the World Cup. Changed your mind a bit, hasn't and it? And Ronaldo's upset everyone at Man United and joined a, a team in Saudi Arabia. Do you reckon he's gone to a missus, yeah? He's gone, babe, listen, I've got this mad offer. It's worth half a billion for the next two years, yeah? 
we get this done, that's a set for life after that. <laughs> <laughs> that's it. off the mortgage. Yeah. Yeah. We're done. That's it. Just get through these two years. We'll grind it out, right? And that's it. We're set. We can retire and relax and have a nice time. He could quite easily be playing Champions League football. I know he could, yeah. He could. He could not... Mate, he could have taken his pick. You know what I mean? As long as he as he goes for the right wage for whoever it would, he's, he could have still gone to it. plenty of the top teams in Europe. It is what it is, though, you know. Uh, United, though, uh, what are you saying? I'm buzzing off United at the minute. They are sneaking up that league. Um, fourth they are now. Fourth in the league. I want to talk about De Gea quickly as well, because he made a really good um, free kick save, actually. Really good free kick from Ruben Neves. Um, a lot of people buzzing off it, saying it's like, you know, top corner, all that kind of stuff. It's a good save, don't get me wrong, um, but it's a comfortable save, you know. Like I say, a lot of people getting a bit over the top with it. It's De Gea, you know. It's a good save. And I think it's one of those... Genuinely, it's one of those saves where if you're in training and he makes that save, I think the goalie coach would be saying, come on, you need to hold that. Really? Genuinely, wow. you need to hold that, yeah? He looked like he was full. He was full stretch. If you watch it slow-mo, his hands kind of soften at the end, yeah? He knows he's got there and he's just put it around for a corner. In training, I guarantee you, they would say, come on, hold that, David. Hold it, all right? Wow. That's the way it goes. That's the levels, mate. It's David De Gea. David De Gea, one of the best goalies in the world. He can hold that all day long, all right? Um, but buzzing from Man United up to third. Lads up to third, yeah? Yeah. Yeah? Yeah. Yeah. Love that. Fact checking. Well done. Um, right. Ruben, Ruben Nevers, by the way. But he's a player, mate. Oh, I, I just, uh, it, it's a miracle. To, honestly, it's, it's a, a miracle. miracle that Wolves have held on to him for so long. It's yeah, an absolute it is, miracle, it is. isn't it? He's, he, it's, it sounds bad to say this, but it's almost like he's. I think he's too good for Wolves. He needs to get. He needs to move somewhere, doesn't he? Liverpool player. Agreed. Man United a fourth, by the way. Man United a fourth. Yeah. Right there. Man United are fourth. Man United, United are fourth. fourth. We've gone fourth, United third, fourth. fourth. Yeah, fourth. Yeah. Yeah. Right, anyway, I want to talk about the team who are at the top at the minute. The first in the league, oh. all right? Arsenal. Now, watch this game. Um, was it Friday night, Saturday night? I, can't, I don't even know what day yeah, it is at the minute. What did you think before the game? Because I was there going, like a little bit like the Leicesters we talk about. Yeah, and, yeah. You, and I was going... I think Arsenal could come and stuck here. Yeah, mate, Brighton away is a tough place to go. It is always a tough place to go, genuinely, right? And it takes... It, there's a lot of like younger teams, a lot of inexperienced teams that will go away to the Amex, go to Brighton, and they'll just get turned over. They get rolled over because Brighton are that sort of. They've got that experience. They've got that know-how. They still play. They always will play the same sort of style of football, right? They're a very good team. And there's a lot of teams go there and just get passed off the park. Arsenal, fair play to them. They dominated from the first minute. Absolutely, Ars- they were brilliant. Arsenal last year, the year before, the year before, you, you'd have gone. Oh, they're, they're drop points. Yeah, they'll fall short, wouldn't they? They look different this year. Yeah, they this did. Yeah, season they done. They just look so together. Yeah, I know. I mean, Martin Odegaard. Oh, we said it. We said it on the football filler a couple of weeks ago. Yeah. That he's a genius, mate. He is a genius. See that pass, mate. The, the Meg's one. When he, when he oh. set up Martinelli for the goal, mate. He did a few in the game, he's you know. A sicko. I know. He's so he's good, a, isn't he? Oh, Do you know what? He's such a nice geezer as well. Really? I met, yeah. him, I met him three weeks ago um, for an interview. Led. You forget he's 23. That's what I mean. He's been around since he's 15. 15, mate. I remember him back in the day from that Norwegian team, getting the move to Real Madrid. It was all a bit too big at the time. Then he went saucier dad, didn't quite work out for him. Mate, he is honestly... He's one of those who's worth now, he's got to be worth 50, 60, 70 million. Easy. 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 Absolutely easy. 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 He's brilliant. You've got him, Martinelli, Saka just turning it on. It's nice, isn't it? They've got Emil Smith-Rowe coming back from... Yeah. Mate, that's what I mean. Not even getting looking. Ketty has stepped up. Stepped up again. I was about to say about Nketi, I'm so pleased he's got a chance. And that finish against, uh, who was it? Yeah, Not game last, before, yeah. Yeah, Brilliant. rolled in, bang. Oh, oh it's beautiful, yeah. isn't it? He's so good he's getting so a chance, he's the good, well. The good thing about Arsenal is as well, it's like, look, look at their rival Spurs and they can't seem to attack like at Arsenal. But Arsenal will win in a variety of different ways. Yeah, for they? sure, yeah. And like you said, they just blown them away yesterday. They've blown them away. And I heard a couple of people going, oh, but yeah, Saliba didn't play. They looked a little bit dodgy. And you go, at the back, and you kind of go... They scored four goals. Occasionally, that's going to happen. You're not going to sure. cons- keep a clean sheet every game. Hey. You're not going to concede one every game. They smashed them. They actually smashed yeah, it. And shout out to the good. boys in midfield for my fancy Premier League team as well. Oh, Odegaard, Martinelli. Did you have Saka? Uh, no, I didn't have Saka. My son had Saka. Um, but Fantasy Premier League is going wild for me at the minute. Just with these Arsenal boys, they are absolutely killing it for me. Um, right, come on, let's talk about let's talk about Man City then because. Um, they were they were a banker for me the other day. Honestly, they were an absolute banker for, for me. It ended one all right. Haaland obviously scoring his obligatory one goal. I thought he'd probably got two or three, but he's ta- he'll take the one. Um, but it, that's a disappointing result for them, you know. That is that's a really I'm disappointing result for them, isn't it? That I thought that was a, like a, that's gonna got four five nil written all over it as well. Fair play to Everton though, right? 
Absolutely, but do you know what? I love Pep Guardiola. He's, you know, he's an absolute genius. But when he, it seems like he's really surprised that teams go to the Etihad and defend. Yeah. Because I think he came out afterwards and he goes, "Well, they did have nine men behind the ball." Really? Pep, Pep, <laughs> really, Pep? What do you want them to do? Not just go free flowing and just yeah. absolutely pull their pants down? Exactly. Yeah. Just let us pick, let you pick us apart, kind of thing. But that's absolutely what that's no what you chance. said to James Madison, wasn't it? I spoke to James Madison. <laughs> and I said, what? "I said after the game, what did Pep come and say to you?" And he was like, "Because he was like, you know, you know, when he yeah, goes yeah, out yeah, and yeah, he yeah. He was like, he was saying to him like, "Why didn't you guys play like the last ten minutes, like the whole game?" And then James Madison said, well, because we didn't want to get beat in 7-0. Yeah, you would. You know, it's Man City. If, like, he seems surprised. He goes, well, yeah, but they did have nine men behind the ball. There's, there's basically no team in the world that can play as well as Man City can the like they do. Like, yeah. if any team goes away to the Etihad and tries to be open and play expansive and passing for... You will get your pants pulled down. <laughs> 100%. It will be 7-0. It's fact. So you have to play a certain way of football, yeah? Keep in the game, right? And then, like you say, get to the last 15, 20 minutes or something like, like that. Like Damari Gray. And try and score a worldie like Damari Gray, by the way. Are we all unanimous on this, by the way? Goal of the, goal of the weekend, I mean, that, yeah? That joke. Goal of the weekend, Damari Gray. <laughs> Great, there have, play, there have been some really good goals. Elise, was it? Um, yeah, Elise, yeah. yeah. James Ward Prowse free, free kick. Free kick. Yeah. I want to um, talk about the James Ward free kick, Prowse free kick in a minute, by the way. Yeah, but yeah Tamari Gray. But, um, but yeah, mate, sorry, go on. No, Crafty, you mate. Go Man City should have won. Man City, um, yeah. Easily. But yeah, you've got to expect that teams are going to go and play like that. Every team, in fact, unless you're. Maybe Arsenal, Liverpool. Oh, even like, then, mate, no. Yeah. I ain't having Arsenal well, are going to go there and try and go, right, lads, just play the way we play. No chance. No. I ain't having it. I think even they change. I, I do. Everton need a change. Yeah. And I'm not sure that was a brilliant result for Everton. He says this every reason. week. He says this, he is the biggest Frank Lampard no, hater no, I just, ever. I just think they kept up by the skin of their teeth last year. Well, it wasn't in the end, was it? But I just feel like they're stale and... They need something, and I think that point is a little bit of a false, false dawn. And they've got some tricky games coming up. And I think unless he gets a couple of wins quick, he could be next out the door. I'm not having a word. He's saying it. If you go away to the Etihad, right, Man City, and you get a point, yeah, it is worldy. It is the biggest bonus point ever. Guarantee you. Yeah, there yeah. are pro- there are probably 18 teams, probably 19 actually, in the Premier League that if you go away to the Etihad and get a point, I genuinely that. get a point. I'm a Chelsea fan. It is a bonus I think it's point. a very it's quick fix for them though. I think there's bigger problems there. Um, I want to say a quick shout out to Jordan Pickford by the way because he made some big saves in that Did game, you? a big one late on as well. And a lot of people on here always think that I'm always like criticising Jordan Pitford. I'm a big Jordan Pitford fan, by the way. I am a very, very big Jordan Pitford fan. Um, And he made a really good save. I could see him buzzing with energy. I love it. I do. I I love love it. I love that. Yeah. I'm going to put a shout in there for Chit House of the Week for... Harland. Yeah, this was wicked. I love this, by the way. This is like good shit housery, by the way. So he's he's been at him and Ben Godfrey have been at each other. All game. All game. Yeah. He's mimicking him, he's having a pop. And then when he sprinted over to Mikolenko. Mate, how fast what did you did he, say to me this mate, morning? How fast has this guy ran? Yeah. So you just see him, he does that classic knee up Harlan Harlan <laughs> and he's doing that run I swear that is like Olympic sprinting pace isn't it it is outrageous isn't it the lad by the time the lad gets his head up to kick it he's already on him Harland is already on him that is like nobody else can run that fast that's Mate, phenomenal he, I've said it before now. He's, he's, he's not he's, he's not, a freak he's isn't a freak. he I reckon if you cut him with a knife you wouldn't see blood you'd see metal yeah, yeah <laughs> wires yeah, mercury wires. mercury yeah. just gently seeping yeah, out yeah. <laughs> <Mercury>. adamantium <laughs> Adamantium, I like it, I like it. Um, oh, yeah, man. we're going to give Harlan shit out of the week, but in a good way, because I love that. I <laughs> love all that. House, I do, yeah. I love all that kind of, like, winding up. And him and Godfrey, had it, like, Godfrey was guaranteed told to, mate, you get in Harlan's head. Like, you kick him, you nudge him, you pinch him. Anything you can do to try and annoy him, yeah? And to be fair to him, Harlan was on a yellow card, and I, Pep said after the game, he said, listen, I had to say to you, I had to say to him, don't get sent off in this game. If you get sent off in this game, you'll ruin us, all right? And he said, fair play to Erlen. He listened to me. He calmed it down. Didn't get the second yellow card. I like that. Do you know what, though? I think referees uh, this weekend, because Saka, I think, was a little bit fortunate not to get a second yellow yeah, card. And I was. think the referee bottled it yeah, because did. of who he was. Yeah. And I think Harlan the maybe same got thing. a bit of treatment. Yeah, yeah, I do. Yeah. I agree. I so, agree. You, have you ever been in a change room, uh, dressing room, where a manager's gone, go and wind him up? 
Oh, and what do they tell him to do? Just like, do whatever you want. Mate, what, the going, classic like, one, the classic one. Or Craig or step Gardner. On, stepping on their when toes. I was at West Brom, right? Craig Gardner, whoever we would play, yeah, if, if he would start probably 70% of the time, Craig Gardner was, right? But when he did start, yeah, Tony Pulis was wicked at doing this, right? He would he would make a point of going. So if we're playing with Crystal Palace, yeah, yeah, I remember him saying this clear as day. He would say, right. Guards, your job today is Wilfred Zaha, yeah? <laughs> Don't worry about the game, this genuinely. Do not worry about the game, yeah? Don't yeah. worry about anything. You get the ball, give it to somebody else, yeah? Be- be- give it to the better player, yeah? But your job today is Wilfred Zaha. And honestly, he would carry it out to a T. Really? He would get into his head, get into his face, nudge him, pinch him, kick him, Was anything. he a talker? Yeah. Oh, yeah, he would be all over him, mate. He would be giving him dog's abuse. Because you knew that if you give Wilfred Zaha it, he, gonna, he, he, would, he would lose it. He would blow a few he would get sent off easy yeah and that's what all he'd do he'd just make a point of following him around the pitch kicking him kicking him pinching him elbowing him it. honestly it was horrible Craig Gardner was well class. I love you guards honestly he was so good we at doing it we need to get guards on the Foscast we will get guards on the Foscast he's like a chief exec at Birmingham technical City technical director man, technical director yeah, yeah. yeah. lovely bloke though honestly he's chief exec he's one technical of them yeah. Director, yeah. technical director yeah. something like that yeah. blues um, right where, Rob, where were we, by the way? We're miles off this here. Sorry, um, yeah, who are we going to talk about? Should we talk about Liverpool? Should we talk about... Um, so, oh, I, I feel so sorry for him. Um, is it Wout Faze? Wout Faze. Um, Leicester centre-back. Oh, Can we just get... Are we going to do Chump of the Week here? Oh, we've got to do Chump of the Week. We've got to get it out of the way. I don't think we need to say it, do we? So, it's, no, li- yeah, no. it's Liverpool 2, Leicester 1. Um, <laughs> and Le- Liverpool didn't even score a goal. Two own goals from Wout Faze. Oh, mate. Good w- finishes. No, do you know what? I want to break the first one down, all right? I do, because I feel sorry for that, um, Wardy here in goal for, for Leicester, OK? Because um, he shouted so early for the ball, right? The cross has come in, he shouted so early for the ball, and everybody else can hear him. And, as, and I'm watching the game live, and I'm thinking, I can hear you shout here, so what's he doing? And it is an absolute rush of blood from the defender, yeah? It is, it's, it's kind of headless, it's... It's it's so silly. It's such a silly thing to do. But that's a bit of a problem as a defender, you know. If you haven't got that sort of calmness and collectiveness about you, that when you hear something, trusting it and letting the goalie do his thing, then that can be a bit of a problem in your football career. You know that. Because it's like you can let the emotions of the game get in your head and, and really affect you. And I think that's all that's happened there. He's away at Anfield. He's a bit excitable. And the goalkeeper shouted and he has not listened to a word he said. He's made a rash hack at the ball. Oh, it was horrible. It, the, I, mean, I mean, it, apparently, I, I, you know, I'm not a Leicester fan, but apparently he's been unbelievable. He has been incredible. Bloke. Um but the whole his whole actions were stupid. Yeah, Seba, Seba's a Leicester fan. Yeah. Seba, what are you saying? Sloppy, he said. Seba's yeah. in the room. Yeah. <laughs> he said sloppy. He loves he, he loves Wout Faze, but he said sloppy. That's what he said. He basically. was like the way he was standing, the position, and not listening to yeah. the keeper. It's a, it's, a, it's do you know what? It's a, it's a sloppy way. loss for Leicester, really. To be fair, it's one of those games where you look at it on the face of it and you go, "We've come away to Anfield. We've lost two one. They were brilliant, by the way. They have not even scored a goal here. Leicester, Liverpool Leicester have not brilliant. scored a goal, and we've still lost the game. Like that is unforgivable, really, isn't it? Unbelievable. And can I point um, shout out Keane and Dewsbury Hall? Yeah. Yeah, Jeez, beautiful, weren't it? Took his goal really well. The, the goal, yeah. But he's all round play. No, he's a proper Classic. player, isn't he? Yeah. He's unbelievable. Yeah, he, he can't be far away from getting an England shout soon, you know. Yeah, yeah. He can no, not be far so. away, can he? That pace to accelerate yeah, know, for the goal. It, yeah. But it's just one two touch. Yeah. He I, I know he's been on goal for life and like, you know, but I'm not he's saying mates. Yeah, it makes no, yeah, like, my boy. Watching that game, like, yeah. he was the best player on the pitch. He looks strong though, he's a strong runner. You can tell a good player but a strong runner, you know. He's quite a small chap, isn't he? No, his legs are big, mate, big bum. He's not, he's got, he's not it, tall. He's got that big bum and strong legs, and when he runs, you can tell he's a powerful yeah. lad. And that's Man. a bit. Does Nunes get an assist for. Um, no, for, no, I'm not having that as an no. assist one little bit. Um, Nunes. Yeah. Good player. It's not far away. It's not far away. It just needs to go. It's... And it needs to go quickly. Because I'll put him into my dream team. I'll put him into my fancy team two weeks ago now, right? And he's he got five points for an assist at the weekend, right? But he needs to start scoring goals. Well, he got an assist for that. Right, apparently. I think he did, yeah. <laughs> I think no, he, he did. I think he did. Okay. Um, he... Um, he needs to start scoring goals, right? Because if those chances... Remember at the beginning of the season when he signed, by the way? A lot of money, Erling Haaland signs. A lot of money, the two were compared like neck and neck. It's going to be so close, isn't it? Mate, mm. Haaland has blowed it out the water, right? Yeah. 
he's got to do more for me, Darwin Nunes. He oh, does. Yeah, he has score. to. He has to score goals. And like that game on that game at the weekend, right? Harlan scoring two or three goals there. It's as simple as that. He's scoring two or three. But goals. He's making. He is making chances for himself and other people. Yeah, true. I I don't think he's far away from really lighting it up. This it's is why. Time. This is why. Do you know what? Right. I when if I had my time again, I'm never being a goalkeeper. I'm going to be a striker. Do you know why? Right. <laughs> I'm going to be a striker. I'm going to be a striker. Right. Do you know why? As a goalkeeper, I could make a hundred saves on a weekend. Right. Hundred saves. I let a last minute goal in, and I'm the dickhead. I'm the problem. I'm the one that made a mistake. I cost my team. Yeah. It's all right, mate. Come on. That's not fair. It's not fair. It's all right, mate. It's all right. Darwin Nunes gets about twenty chances a game. Misses all of them. Right. Sticks one in in the last minute. He's the man. What a guy. Oh my God. He creates chances all over that place. Striker's life, mate. Striker's life is so good. You can save a penalty in a penalty shootout, and then everyone's running after you. Yeah, but that happens once in an absolute blue moon, don't it? Have you ever had that? Have you ever have you ever been in a penalty shirt where you've saved it and everyone's ran after you? No. <laughs> <laughs> so no, he hasn't. It's gonna be, be a striker. No, no, I mean, no, no, I mean experience for no, you. No, none of that, mate. All right, none of it. I want that. Okay, that's probably what it is. Um, but yeah, <laughs> I, he needs to do more. As simple as that. Um, Newcastle leads nil nil. Um, on the face of it, a bit of a bore draw, but. If you actually look at the game, Newcastle popped Leeds off the park. Massive saves by Melia, by the way. Massive saves. I think he's made... I, look, I was watching the game earlier just to, like, double-check myself. He's made about five or six real top-class saves. It's a per- perfect saves. game for you, isn't it? Perfect game yeah. for me. This is, like, a dream, honestly. Yeah, a dream An game absolute dream. Foster. Two of my favourite Premier League goalkeepers just making big saves all over the game. Um, Newcastle, two massive goalies. Is two a, massive is in, goalies. Is in like, <clears throat> stature. I'm pretty sure every time we do this and we talk about Nick Pope and <laughs> Melier, I'll say they're about six foot seven, which they are. They're six foot seven, both mm. of them. They're massive. But on Wikipedia or whatever it is, it says they're six four. So everybody will jump in the comments and go, "Yeah, but Wikipedia says they're six four, so you're wrong." And I'm like, "Okay, well I've stood next to them, right? And they're about that much taller than me, and I'm six four, so they're about <laughs> six seven. Okay, they are. They're massive, and they've both got massive heads on them. Um, but yeah, shout out. What what do you make of by the way? Debravka has just been recalled from Manchester United back to Newcastle. Castle. Bizarre. What? Bizarre. I don't get it. I, Maybe I, it's because they couldn't sign Ben Foster. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I don't get it. Someone let him down last minute. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. What's up, dickheads? All right. What do you make? I don't know. It's a weird one. I think it must be like a personal issue or something. Like he must be missing, like living at home or something, because he's not injured. That Newcastle have, haven't had any injuries. They don't like. They've got Loris Carriers. They've got um, uh, what's his uh, name? Um, oh yeah. my god. Carla? Yeah, Cardalo. Yeah. Um, like, I don't know why he would get recalled like that. It's a, it's a real, real weird situation. It's bizarre, isn't it? I didn't. I don't even quite understand why he went in the first place. Yeah. Because if you were to put Dubravka and Tom Heaton next to each other, uh, is there much in it? No, not really. Uh, to be honest, I'm, with you, I'd rather have Tom Heaton. I love Tom Heaton. Yeah. Is. I think in this position you need uh, an experienced goalkeeper. Someone at Man United need. They just need an experienced goalkeeper. Somebody who's going to sit there. Like, David Hay obviously gets on very well with him. It's a perfect fit, it really is. Um, obviously, Dubravka played, didn't he, in the League Cup a few weeks ago, didn't have a great game. Um, maybe that's got some sort of bearing Maybe they it. sent him back. <clears throat> I don't know. You don't know, do you? Um, Chelsea, let's talk about your boys, mate. Let's talk about your boys on the telly last night. Um, disappointing. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I can see this coming, mate, honestly. I, I said before the game, I was watching my son, I said, this has got a bit of a draw written all over this here. Forest aren't too bad at home. Chelsea, you never really know what you're going to get, do you? Oh, it's, it's so disappointing. It's so disappointing. And we're, and we're, so, we're ten times a better team with Rhys James. Yeah. He's a right back. I know. That, he's so good. Have we heard he what paid, his injury is yet? Yeah, he's out for three weeks. Oh. So I think it's a rear carry. Yeah. the one he was out for for a long time. But I went there uh, at Stamford Bridge against Bournemouth. Yeah. For, and for 60 minutes, it, he, it was him. Yeah. All him from right back. Yeah, he was unbelievable, and then he goes off injured, and yeah. we just look a different team. I just I don't know what's going on. I don't, I don't want to sit here and slag off Chelsea or Graham Potter or stuff, but we're still playing without a striker. Yeah, we signed 10, 11 players, I think. And we're still playing with a false nine. You need a big striker. You need a main man, don't you? A focal point. Mm. I just don't get any. And I was sitting there yesterday watching the game, going, "It's only a matter of time before they score." Yeah. I was like, I can't be the only one going. They're well on top of it. Yeah. Then they score. You know, Serge Aurier is buzzing as well oh when he scores my. that I goal. Old Tottenham boy. Yeah, exactly. I, think, I don't I know if you agree with this. Disappointing. 
tubes, but it feels to me like they've got too many squad players in the fact that they don't quite know who's like... Too many who's, decent players, yeah, not too, enough Yeah, too many players. good players, not enough yeah. starters. Do just, you know what I mean? They're just not playing well. Just, I mean, Thiago Silva's Chelsea's best player. Yeah, was was he 39? 38, 39, 39 like yeah. 63. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, mate, he is, he's one of the best players I've ever seen live. He's lovely, really? Yeah. He's, honestly, he is streets ahead. He's got hardly any pace. Yeah, no, don't matter, mate. Don't matter. He's the ball ball in the head. I absolutely love him. I absolutely wow. love him. I just think, I think Chelsea are in a transitional period, but like it worries me because it, we're all talking about you know Declan Rice going back to Chelsea and stuff like that. And the reason he will, you know, he loves West Ham, but the reason he will leave West Ham is to play Champions League football. Yeah. I can't see at the moment. I can't see us getting anywhere. Where are you? Eight. We're eight. Eight. Wow, that's incredible. Seven points behind fourth. Wow. And we're winning. not on form. And t- yeah, that's what I mean. That's the problem, is though. They're the not teams in that well. top four now are on form. You've got Man United coming back strong. Newcastle winning Newcastle. week in, week out. Seven without defeat. Liverpool and Flames. Liverpool, Fl- what were oh. you saying about Aubameyang? Nah. Just, you, I knew this. You know, you, I, you I could have told you this before the season started. When they signed him, I thought, well, it's not, it's not going to do anything, that. Well, that, is not gonna, that is not going to do anything. He signed for two cool. Of course he did. Oh, uh, yeah. right. This, this owner, do you know what this Tuchel, owner like, seems to do? and Tuchel are close. <laughs> Right, but then, of course, yeah, then yeah, yeah. Then he joined yeah, and then he got the old team Dortmund, tag, didn't he? Th- th- this owner seems to me like he, it's almost like he plays like championship manager or something, comes across a player and goes, I like him, I'm going to sign him. Doesn't listen to anybody else, just signs players, just signs what, players. What, Yeah, he's oh, signing, I, I he's signing, comes from he's signing good players, but he's not signing starters. Like I say, to players to fit a system and go, right, you're, that's your job. You're going to play in that position yeah. and that's it. It's like he's built a bit of a squad and that's it, really. Well, it'll be interesting now because he's got a window. In January. Well, Fafana's yeah. signed, isn't he? Yeah. He signed, he was at the game yesterday. He's a centre forward. You've got to give him time, though. Like, even if Chelsea, yeah, were to, if, if Chelsea were to finish eighth this season, Tubes. No, don't sack him. OK. No. Because what's, what's the point? What's the point? Oh, mate, you're downbeat on this. I, I'm just, I feel I'm just, for you, mate. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not going to lie. I feel a bit like you when you want to come back as a centre forward and not a goal kicker. It's just, it's just, up, just upsetting. It's just upsetting that... We should be doing better. I don't know, mate. But we're, we're, it's like we've got too many players not playing very well. It's just like, mm. We're in the doldrums. Chelsea are rubbish. Wolves are rubbish. Yeah. It's all right. Mark's back next week. So. I'm, I'm an adopted Man United and Arsenal fan anyway, so um, we're flying. I, anyway. love, I love Chelsea so much. It's just like, we just need to. We just, I don't know. All right, play, let's, have a look at, let's have a look at a few of the other ones. Um, right, we're going to go Palace, Bournemouth, 2 0 win for Palace. Um, Palace needed that, by the way. They needed that. They've had a bit of, few bad results re- recently. Um, they lost at home on Boxing Day, I think they did. Um, massive result for them. Um, Bournemouth, though, I think that's what, six or seven defeats mm. in a row now. There's a few teams down there at the minute who are showing some serious relegation worries, like likes of Southampton, West Ham, Southampton as well. Lost two one. I think that's six to five or six defeats in a five row. In a row. Oh, five five in, a row. in a row. Um it's not looking good. We had Dave Watson on here last week, yeah. who ex Southampton goalie coach. Yeah. He was saying basically that it's not looking good for Southampton at the minute, is it? Like that's a that's a disappointing result that. Massively disappointing. I, know. Yes, but I, I want to talk about the free kick. I want to talk about the uh the goal, James Ward Prowse. Burnt Leno in goal for Fulham. By the way, Fulham on fire, by the way. Absolutely on fire. Up to, what are they, seventh in the league? Yeah. Seventh in the league, Fulham, which is incredible. Um, but the free kick that Southampton scored, James Ward-Prowse, very similar to the David De Gea free kick, actually, that he saved. Um, Burnt Leno, his positioning, he's too far over. So he's got the wall set up. The free kick's about 13, 35 yards out, maybe. Um, don't get me wrong, it's James Ward-Prowse. He's a, you know what James Ward-Prowse can do, right? But... It's not right in the corner. It's not in the top schnitzel like that. It's not absolutely nailed. Positioning, he has to look at it. And I guarantee you, we'll look at it today and he'll go, I'm too far over and I haven't moved my feet quick enough. Where should he be? Where's his perfect position? So he's got the wall set up. He's got his wall set up. But because he's from 35 yards yards out, you don't need to be right behind the wall. You can almost go... Middle of the goal? Yes, sort of, just off centre. You can go just off centre, yeah? Because I guarantee you, if James Ward-Prowse is in training and he puts a ball 35 yards out, there's no wall, there's nothing, right? And you're the goalkeeper, you would say... I think I will save every single one of these shots. Yeah, you would. Yeah, You'd yeah. say, I'll save every single one of these shots. What you do is you get your wall set up and that blinds you a little bit, right? And then it, you get a bit safe and you go, well, if he puts it in that corner, then if he puts it in the corner, it's, just, you know, it's a great goal. I'll hold my hands up. But he's just too far over. He's got to back himself a bit. Just off centre, he makes a save all day long. 
it's, it's, yeah, it's not great, honestly. I guarantee you, I'm not, a, again, a big Burt Leno fan. I really mm -hmm. like him, but I think he's got that one wrong there today. Did I ever tell you about when I saw James Ward Prowse <laughs> taking free kicks? No. Oh, my God, we did a, you know the drill for yeah. soccer, and it was me, Fenners, Billard versus Nathan Redmond, James Ward Prowse, and I can't remember someone else. And at the, at the end of the thing, I said, to one, Jimmy, I said, why don't you go and do a, like, free kick clinic with yeah. James Ward Prowse? I swear to God, I've never seen <laughs> anything like it. Goal. It had manic Goal. It, it Goal. It, it, always in the same position. Whipple. It was going straight in, oh, as you call it, the top point. schnitzel, just every time. He's absolutely it. beautiful, like, isn't it? It was a, the way he just comes, and it, the power he puts on it, and the way it dips. Beautiful. Hasn't isn't he it? just, uh, I think, I'm not 100%, <laughs> but isn't he tied or very close now to Bex in terms of most direct direct free kicks ever in was the brand. Was it Seb Larson top of that for a point or something? I don't know. I remember no, I he was think, up there. I Seb Larson's was. just retired, by the way. Has he? Yeah. What a player. I know, what a player. Um, get him on the Foscast. Yeah, we should get him on the Foscast. Where does he live? Be amazing. Is he out um, in Sweden? He'll be in Sweden somewhere, won't he? Go yeah. out there. Yeah, damn yeah. right as well. You're out there I'm soon. going out there soon, yeah. actually. I'm going yeah. out in a couple of weeks. Big Jonas. Yeah, big Jonas. Um, yeah, that's Southampton. Bottom of the table now, by the way. Not very good. Um, another team struggling massively. West Ham, five defeats in a row now. And David Moyes is now the favourite manager to be sacked next. Five to four. I heard Ooh. it on the radio this morning. Five to four to be sacked next. Five. What's going on at West Ham? West Ham, like, last season, they were on fire. They were like, you know what I mean? They, they were winning games right, left and centre in Europe, having this run and Probably because they played stuff. 100 games or something. Stupid. Exactly yeah. that. Burnout, mate. That's what I'm putting it That's down to. catch up on you, doesn't it? Burnout but all day long. They've surely got to give him time <laughs> after what he's done yeah. since he's come back yeah. to West Ham. David Moyes has got a real lovely you know, name in the game. He always gets round it. He always improves. I don't... I just... I just think it's you know unfair to say he's got to go and all that. And like, I don't want to. Con people like, were asking him yesterday as well. Like, yeah, it's horrible. He's earned, it? he's earned the right. Like with you got, look at the, the the young manager at Southampton, Jones, and then Lampard and and people like that under pressure. It's different for Moisey because he's been there and done it. Yeah. And this, I would say, is a form. It's just a yeah, form just thing. Yeah. Well. But West Ham, are, they are a, they are a decent team, and I don't think I actually don't like to put it down to luck. But they haven't had a, they haven't had great luck, and I think they'll turn. They'll turn a corner. Yeah, Brentford, brilliant win for them, though. To be fair, we can't overlook that. That was a fantastic win. Even Tony with a goal to Silver. Um, How quick was he, by the way? Rapid, mate. He is rapid. They've got some little gems in there, Brentford. They're a great club. They have got a great little squad of players, yeah. haven't they? Right, real like players that you wouldn't expect or whatever, and they go about their business nicely they just go yeah. under the radar good team Brentford I like Thomas Brentford. Frank as well Thomas Frank proper they, manager absolutely. really really nice Silver's yeah. goal though with the Silver's goal do you think Cresswell just needs to step across because he's obviously getting rinsed for pace oh, when I, but it when just I, feels like he just needs to just get in front of his man when yeah. I originally saw it I thought it was a foul I thought we pulled him back right. to get past him. Yeah, he, he I, do, I, he I agree. With you. I think I it, thought he sort of that's the way football is nowadays. Though that's you, I think you just need to be a bit, a bit more stronger, sort of thing. I think it, it's not far off being a foul, but in days gone by, that's never a foul. Do you no. know what I mean? That's never a foul. I just think he needs to get his body, use that a bit more, be a bit stronger. Um, talking of managers under pressure, Antonio Conte, Spurs. Um, I watched this game last night. Um, Spurs first half. Good team, looks strong, just a matter of time. Second half starts, pff, chalk and cheese. Literally chalk and cheese. Villa came out, the better team, got the goal. Looked like they were the only ones going to score. Um, what do you make of goal. Conte, Ben? What do you make of this whole thing? Because they're just negative, aren't they? What, what, yeah. what should take uh, it's, it's just constantly him being miserable, to be honest with you. Luke, cameraman Luke. <laughs> Agreed. It is. It's just he's, constantly. He's got a touch of the Mourinho, isn't he? Hundred percent. It's like it's the Conte show all the time. It genuinely is like the Conte show. Spurs have got unbelievable squad of players. Unbelievable. I, I do have to say at the minute though, their defence looks ridiculously shaky. Like there's players playing in that defence where I just think, if I'm an opposition striker, player, whatever, I'm looking at it and thinking we'll have a chance against these today. We will. We'll have a chance against these today. They're a little bit shaky. Not like solid starting players. Hugo Lloris, big mistake for the first yeah. goal. I don't know whether that's like a World Cup hangover or what, but it was a big mistake. Like I, I, I've watched the goal a few times from a few different angles, right? And there's one one angle where I, I think it's Louise who took the shot, and it's he's 35 yards out. Yeah, it's a long, long way out. And Ollie Watkins, at one point, he's on about the 18 yard box, and he's slightly in Larice's way. So Larice has taken a little look to his left. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and that is the bit that when the ball has moved, so it's gone past Watkins, it's done a little wobble in the air, right? And 
He's, he's basically, instead of trying to move his feet back across, he's just uh, tried to do a falling collapse. It's called like a falling collapse. Eh? <laughs> yeah, that's yeah. what it is. Um, he's misjudged it, popped out, bang. That is, as a goalkeeper, it's that's poor, it? it's poor. So it is. Poor. It's a bit of a, it's one of those in training, if you did it, you'll be going, oh my God, that's disgusting. Like, don't do that. In a game, it's almost unforgivable as a goalkeeper, honestly. You'd, you'll be so disappointed with it. Um, but that, that sets the stall out for Villa then. They're going at the second. And Douglas Louise, what a finish. Douglas Louise, lovely goal as well. What? Really what an assist from yeah. McGinn. Oh, what a love John beautiful McGinn. little slidey yeah. slidey that was. Lovely. Emery's um, had a good start, He's hasn't done he? Brilliant. Yeah. I don't, and do you know what? I'm really pleased for him. Same. Because I thought he was like got a bit of a hard time at Arsenal. Yeah, it was, he ca- Again, he came yeah. in at such a hard time when yeah. he came in. Yeah, yeah. true that, true It's like that, when yeah. Moisey came in at Old Trafford after Ferguson, wasn't it? He got no chance. Some he of the boys no say chance. he's unbelievable. Really? Yeah, so like... Tactician. Yeah, he's like his tactics are a joke. Love that. So good. Um, right, yeah. there we go, lads. It just leave one more thing to do. <laughs> Let's just get one more quizzical, thing to do. Quizzical. You're on full Quiz time. Yeah. Let's get quizzical. Okay, here we go then. The football filling 10 question quiz. Let's get 2023 off to a good start. Come on, Fozzie. <laughs> Let's have it, Jim Lee. Let's go. Okay, who had the career path of Schalke, Manchester City, Bayern Munich? Who had the career path of Schalke, Manchester City, and Bayern Munich? Uh, Lee Rossano. Yeah. Hey, hey, let's start with the new year with a bang, bang. Yeah, it's good. I've never got that. It's One good. nil it's to good, yeah. It's good. Who scored the first goal of this match week? Douglas Dewey's. No, it nope. was a Bombardier. I've... Bombardier? Oh. No. Nope. What? Who's Bombardier? Who's <laughs> 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 Bombardier? Who's Bombardier? Of the... Of the... Keaton Dewsbury Hall? No. Nope. Oh, it's all wrong. All right. Do you want to go back in? Are we going to go again? Or do you want the answer? Answer. What'd Ivan Tony scored the first goal of this match. I'd never week. have got that. Never have got that. Hello, me. How many points clear are Arsenal at the top Seven. of the table? Ben. <laughs> <laughs> they were from, he got that from my production notes. As well. <laughs> I just love the sound. <laughs> okay, so as we know, this weekend, Faye scored two own goals. But who was the first ever Premier League Jamie player? Jamie Carragher. Thank you very much. <laughs> yes, correct oh, you. Yeah. <laughs> what? <laughs> She's on fire. Uh, what time does the January transfer window close in the UK Midnight. on the 31st of January? Midnight. 11 o'clock. Ben. 11 p.m. Oh, yeah. <laughs> That's the noise. That's the noise. That's the noise. That's the noise. <laughs> you got no points. You got no points. What year did Martin Odegaard join Arsenal on loan? 2018. 2019. No, all wrong. 2020. No, you can't just all wrong. All, all wrong. 2021. Wow. Oh. He was on the loan the same year he joined. Yeah. Okay. Oh, good question. Like, damn it. Which match this weekend had the highest amount of goals in? Um, oh. it's, you can't look at the board. I'm not looking at the board. You're looking at the They're board. They're cheating. Um, it's the 4 2. Arsenal. You can't, Arsenal no, Brighton. Why not? Why not? Oh, it's stopping from you. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, there was nothing in the rules saying you can't look at the board. Exactly. So we'll he didn't start ben. the question with "Don't look at the board," but who scored the most match? <laughs> oh. <laughs> All right. How many London teams played at home this weekend? Two. No. Three. Three. Ben. Oh! Ben's on fire. No. Oh no! I mean, a complete guess. We've never had a nil. Um, what's the scores, Luke? 4 2 Zippo! <laughs> yeah. two, two, two. Oh, no. Who has won the most Premier League Golden Boots? Alan Shearer. Nope. He's got three. Aguero. Nope. I know it. Oh, so I've got one. No, don't. Guess. Got a bit of time. Who has won the most Premier League Golden Boots? Oh, no, no. Oh, I'm going to put a time on this. Five, four, Three, two. Is there Drogba? Harry no. Ben. Salah? No. Aguero. All incorrect. No, no. Huh? Okay. Thierry Henry. Thierry Henry. Oh, TT. Oh. Your boy. My boy. Oh. Oh. What about the time you tried to make him a cup of coffee? coffee. Yeah. 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 And didn't know how to make him a cup of coffee. <laughs> <laughs> oh, was no. so bad. Do you want a cup of tea? Do you want a cup of tea? Yeah. What do you want? Uh, Where's the milk? Milk? Where's milk? No, coffee's What's milk? What is milk? You don't want coffee. <laughs> you don't want coffee, Jerry. 
I'm on the final question. Well, come on. The Dane's already won. How many goals has Erling Haaland got? 22. This... Incorrect. 20. Incorrect. This season. What's the question? How many goals has Erling Haaland got in this Premier League season so far? Well, Ben's won already. I don't give a heck. <laughs> 17. 21. Incorrect. It is 21. Oh, it's oh, unlucky. <laughs> Do you know what? I think this is a first. I think this is a first. A zero. A, zero. a donut. It's got, it's donut. It's got to be a fourth. A whitewash. Got to be a, a, a milk joke. You've got to like, you've got to either dance or sing a song. Yeah. What do you want me to do? Yeah. No, no, no. Here we go, here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Imagine, yeah, you're in the nightclub, yeah? <laughs> you're in the <laughs> nightclub, right? And then your favourite song in the world came on. What is your go-to dance? Yeah. What is your go-to dance? It's going to be horrible. <laughs> this is going to be horrible. Um, should, we, should we give him some room? It's going to be, should we give him some room? <laughs> you gotta, you gotta stand up and do it. Like, I can't stand up. What do you want me to do? Just stand up, whatever you do. <laughs> <laughs> What's oh, that? Oh, that's wank. Oh, horrible. Oh, oh, oh. Luke, you're going to have to cut that out. Oh, it was so that. bad. Oh. Right, lads. <laughs> well done, everybody. Football filling. Foggy's back. Starts a new year with a bang. See you next week. 